Hello and welcome to Night Parade, the show where we watch anime and talk about it for your entertainment. I'm Fat Man. I'm Venus. And tonight, we're reviewing Chew 2. God, this show is... <gasps> something. We just got... we got done a little while ago watching this all in one sitting. Because well, I did. procrastinated. I didn't watch it because I've seen it already, <laughs> but I joined in through the phone. I was not expecting that to be as much of an emotional ride as it was. It's a surprisingly heartfelt series. Then again, I suppose we should talk about what Chu Chu is. Like, what the anime is about. Yep. Let's see. It's about that special time in everyone's life when you're a completely moron. Chu Chu, or Love Chunbyo and Other Delusions. First, we should, we should describe what a chunbyo is. Yes. That... Oh shit, we haven't had to describe what something is in a while. Yeah. Not since the... <clears throat> missing episode. Right. Unfortunately. So, chunbyo is a Japanese slang term that, uh... Roughly translates to 8th grader syndrome. Or middle school second year syndrome. And it is... Oh, how is... how is this described? It's... the thing that makes middle schoolers so weird. Like, little kids pretending they have special powers, mystical abilities, anything they can do to make themselves feel special. Or cooler. It's, it's the stuff that you do when you're a kid to impress your friends, and you look back on it when you're an adult and want to fucking punch yourself in the face. You're looking like a complete moron. Oh, boy. So, uh, do we give an example of such a lovely... Oh, we're gonna get to our own Chunbyo stories at the end. Okay, we're saving the, our own stories for the end. Oh, okay. yeah. That'll be fun. Oh god, embarrassing myself. So Chu Chu is about... Oh boy, how do we describe our man, this? Our dude, Yuta Togashi. Yeah? Oh yeah. So it's about this guy named Yuta, who was a giant dork. In, in middle school, he was the self-proclaimed Dark Flame Master. He believed you know, that he had... A dark, flaming dragon sealed in his right <laughs> arm. And if the bandages around it were ever released... Out would come the dragon. <laughs> his power would destroy everything! Or, as he said, be engulfed in a dark flame! <laughs> God, I love this show. Which I believe is a reference... To Hiei from Yu Yu Hakusho. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Because in that got... show, Hiei had the Dragon of the Darkness Flame sealed in his arm. Oh my god, it even sounds like it. The... So edgy! Yes. He also wore clothing with many, many belts. Yeah. Had swords. And I'm going to talk about Hiei again later. So... <laughs> Look forward to that. Okay, but so high school, he he's, he turns over a new. He he's like, oh my god, how embarrassing! Packs up all of his old weird bullshit, you know? Yeah, he wants to get rid of it. He does not want to remember his middle school years. He even goes out of his way to go to a high school where none of his old friends went to. Just so they can, just so he can avoid his uh, whack past. <laughs> There's no better way to put it than that, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yep. But on the first day of school, before he goes and introduces himself to the class, he he goes out on the the gym balcony and Wait, says his. Wait, wasn't it his house balcony? What? What's that? It w wasn't it his house balcony or the gym balcony? I don't that remember. That was the gym balcony in the first episode. Oh, I I forgot the first episode because I popped in when 
you messaged me. Right. But... But, go on. First day of school, he goes out to the gym balcony. He doesn't think anyone's around, and he recites his cringy, chunbio bullshit. But there's oh, one person know. that sees him. The perfect cinnamon roll. <laughs> he goes into class, introduces himself as normal, a normal boy. high school student. Normal boy doing normal things. But then he's approached by a girl with an eye patch. Very mysterious. Oh. She's her name's Rika Takanashi, and she's, she's quite so possibly fucking precious. Cute, quite possibly the cutest toony to grace our screens, right? Absolutely. So she does some weeb shit. <laughs> and clenches her eye and falls over. So our main character brings her to the nurse's office, where she confronts him about his Chunibio past. And he's just like, uh, he's like, Dark Flame Master! No! No! I'm done with that stuff! Stop it! Stop it. Insert physical comedy moment here. <laughs> he flips out! <laughs> Rolls around the room, it's hilarious. But, oh, this show is about those two and their growing relationship and growing as people. And as both adults, too. So, this is where I'm gonna drop a spoiler warning. We are definitely gonna talk about some spoilers. Probably yes. gonna talk about some spoilers. We're gonna talk about our favorite, presumably our favorite characters and favorite moments. Yeah. So, if you haven't seen the show, this is your moment to duck out. Come back when you've seen it. It's really, it's, it's like, it cleanses your soul. <laughs> At least that's what I say. We've all done some cringy stuff as kids. And I find this show so relatable, so oh, I, yeah. I recommend this to most people. If you've ever done something weird in your past, which you're lying if you don't, it's beautiful. Okay, let's get to it. So, I didn't know about this show until you showed it to me, but I've always seen that girl that eye patch wearing school girl i've seen her everywhere for years because she's like one of the memes she's like one of the anime icons absolutely and finally getting to see this show is so i'm so happy i i saw this i'm mad at myself for not watching it back then oh yeah i watched this when it was airing Oh, boy. And it is truly a masterpiece. <laughs> I I cringed, I cried a little, I awed at how cute everyone was. <laughs> I thought about punching that one stupid character in the face. You know the guy. The bald guy. <laughs> I feel like punching so many of these characters. Yeah. If you're not into, like, if you're put off by cringy bullshit, <laughs> maybe, stay, maybe stay away from this one. I don't know. Or, or give it some time. Yeah. First couple episodes, I had to pause for long intervals between, oh, between the watches. Bullshit. Because I just... Can't handle the cringe. It's so cringe. I can't do it. It's so, so cringy. But, but the adorableness makes up for it. Absolutely. It's well worth it. It's well worth every time you cringe. And believe me, that's more often than you think. Right? Yeah. Cringing in this happens at least once an episode. At least. So are we gonna talk about uh, the how the eye patch is fake and oh, not yeah. necessary? 
And it's just a contact under there. So, main character, Rika. Main girl. Second she... best girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. The reason she wears an eye patch is to seal the dark powers contained within her eye. Nah, fam. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Yes, she has evil powers stored within her eye. She calls it the Wicked Eye. And every time... Oh, she's also clumsy as hell. <laughs> it's, it, it's beautiful. Uh, let's talk about the other Chuni shit that happens in it, like these fight scenes. I was <laughs> expecting just a calm, funny, slice of life show walking into this. But no. This mm, did everything. This is not only a slice of life, but a battle drama. Yeah, hell yeah. Because God. as the ma as these characters are mm, dweeby as hell. As these characters are acting out their delusions in these crazy battles that they see in their heads, we get to see it with them. Yeah, and it's beautiful. Like the battle between Ladle and Umbrella. And there's <laughs> lasers and shit. So, which fight was your favorite part? Fight? I'm partial to. Mori Summer versus. Uh, Hideku Mori, aka <laughs> Weaponized Pigtails. Oh, yes. But we should talk about the characters. Oh, shoot! I forgot! Yeah. We're jumping the gun a bit. Yeah. Let, let's just back ourselves up and talk about the characters. More specifically, the main cast. Yep. It stars our boy and our girl, Rika. Yeah. And, uh... Rika and Yuta. Yeah, Rika and Yuta. Main two, we've well already with... touched on them. There's also a Deku... Dekomori, who uh, claims to be the rightful wielder of Mjolnir, <laughs> and who uses her hair as nunchucks. She has, like, weighted sandbags tied to her pigtails, <laughs> and she swings around continuously, and, get, and often gets wrapped up in them because she doesn't know how momentum works. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed she hasn't pulled out, out some hairs. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's gonna be killer on her scalp. Yes. Then there's, uh, Nibutani, or Mori Summer. Hmm. <laughs> Another ex Chunbio. Who, much like the main character, uh, goes into a fit of rolling on the floor if you even remotely mention their past. <laughs> she is the cute class president. The most popular gir girl in the school or at least in their grade yeah and will murder you if you talk about her chunbio past i mean when you claim that you are a 700 year old vampire <laughs> <laughs> with who who says love is magic and other such things sanai even has like this Tome. Yeah, Deku Mori has the tome of all the weird, cringy crap Nibutani posted on her blog when she was younger. And <laughs> in the beginning, the only reason she hangs out with the rest of the group is because she wants to get rid of this. Delete any proof of her past as the a let cringy pass. child. There's no running from cringe. <laughs> and then we have, surprisingly, the least cringy character, Kuman. Kuman is best girl. There is no arguing. She is, no. She, she find she's older than all the characters and considers everyone adorable. <clears throat> she's but the only her... second year in the group. Yeah. And she, she just sleeps all the time. <laughs> the only reason she joins the club is so, so she can nap. And then they add, na add napping to the club activities just because of her. <laughs> she's chill, she's pure and innocent, and she likes napping. She's perfect. <laughs> she also has a pet cat. 
Which they call Chimera. <laughs> She's also really goddamn cute. The cat, yeah. The cat's real cute. Oh, Kumin. Oh yeah, Kumin's adorable. Well, everyone's adorable. <laughs> I'd hazard to say all the girls are adorable, but the perfectest one is Kumin. <laughs> but that's because she doesn't do a bunch of weird BS. It's just, I want a nap. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, you're so cute. But that's our cast. And then there's also Rika's older sister. Yes. And uh, Yuta's best friend, who's a complete idiot. Kind of respect him, though. Yeah. Because of uh, taking the fall he for the class like that. For the guys. Taking the fall for the guys. I mean, it was a dick move, but taking the fall made you actually feel slightly better for him. Yeah. Kind of. Like, kind of. <laughs> ignoring the fact that he totally did, in fact, create every single girl in the class. Yeah. But what about Rika's sister? She's so scary. She scares me. She scares you? Yeah. I wish she was my older sister. She's awesome, and she cares so much about Rika. But, my god, she's scary. Very, very scary. She, she... I guess, is a cook... And yeah, doesn't she's... spend too much time with her sister, but looks out for basically black males, our main character, into looking after her. <laughs> you you will watch after my little sister, or else. Or I'll post these recordings of you being a chunbio to the internet. <laughs> and it's the start of something beautiful. Her her primary weapon is a ladle, which she can do just about anything with. It's terrifying. And she even gets in on the Chuni fight. <laughs> As some sort of, like, super villain, it's great. She can fucking chuck that thing across a, like... Playground? <laughs> yeah, she chucked that little across the playground and nailed, uh... Rika. No, it was, Yuta? uh... It, she fucking sniped, uh, Kumin with it in the head. <laughs> And then she went down for a nap. <laughs> a dirt nap? A forced nap. K.O. And she always sneaks into Yuta's room, which terrifies me. I mean, after you, what would you do if someone started hanging out with your emotionally vulnerable little sister frequently? And they were a guy? Yeah, dead. I, I'm, I'm impressed they, that she didn't kill him. <laughs> Especially after finding the magazine under his bed. Uh... Don't know. What's with that? Nothing. Why no. does he have that in the 21st century? Yeah, you've got the internet, bro. <laughs> Maybe a relic from his teenage years? Eh. But let's... Let's, now that we've talked about all the characters, let's get on with this hot, hot plot, you know? Well, basic plot is, uh, they all go to high school, they make a club, Yuta's trying to get through school without it- Tipping off his- Yeah, w without his big secret getting out. He wants to be a normal student. A normal boy. With normal interests. But like, the people he hangs out with make it really hard for that to happen. Darren near impossible. It's it's just a it's it's slice of life, it's character growth. It's yeah. adorable and I can't wait to watch the second season. The second season's great, dude. But let's talk about how fucking endearing this shit is. With all the weird, cringy crap that happened, you'd expect us to be looking away half the time? I- I definitely was. I was not. <laughs> I watched every trip, every stumble, every stand in front of the train, wait for the- just before the doors open, place your hand forward. Let's not all lie and say we've done that at least once. Oh, all the time! Automatic doors? 
Of course I'm using the force. Elevators, the force. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just love how we're first introduced to Rika. It's like her getting on the train. Oh, one of them. Oh, yeah. It's like her whooshing open the train and then just at, well, looking serious and then she friggin' skips onto it. <laughs> so carefree. Like, I'm so excited for school today. Ah. <sighs> Shit's heartwarming, yeah? Yeah. Very, very heartwarming. This heart- this show makes me feel good. It made me feel very good. It makes me feel happy and joy until it doesn't. Uh, it makes me really sad. And then really happy. And then kind of sad again. <laughs> and then, Jesus, Utah, calm the fuck down. Right? Oh my... Oh, fuck Yuda. Right well, there. So... Only in episode 10 and 11. Mm-hmm. He had no reason to friggin' snap at... Deco. Or Rika. Right? Uh... I don't know how to talk about the show. I'm losing it. You're losing it? I'm losing it. So what do we do then? Oh... If you're losing it, do we stop? Nope. Oh. Let you collect yourself? Uh, yeah. I just need to... Mm. I need to take more notes in the future. Mm. We didn't take many notes on this, unfortunately. No. Too busy watching it, because it's so... I... Damn immersive. Can't take my eyes off the screen. Except when I do, when it's cringy. It's fucking gorgeous. Wanna talk about how beautiful the show is? I didn't take any notes on that. I did. Oh, go for it then. Like, dude, didn't you see, like, the visuals and shit? Just, like, how beautifully animated the fight scenes were. And that scene when, uh, Rika and Yuta are down by the river. Ah. And touching. The little promises they make with each other. Yes. They pinky promise. <laughs> so cute. The lighting is great. Uh, uh, there's barely any CG in this, and I love that. Except for maybe some of the fight scenes. And the vehicles nearby. Yeah. And it's wonderful. But... CG in it is few and far between, and it works real well. Yeah. The only thing it doesn't do well is it, it, it the music is sometimes. Oh wait, no, it's all good. Never mind. What am I smoking? The OP and the ED are fun and exciting. Inside, I didn't. <laughs> uh, the OP and the ED. Are just cute. Get some really cute. good gifts from that. This show in general has some good it's gifts. So, it's so gifable. Let's just talk about our feelings with it. Like, you know, the Rika's. Oh shit, I don't know either, dude. Uh, what do we do? I don't know. I don't know how to go into detail on this. It's just vague, vague stuff. Let me check our notes. I... Later in the show, we learn why Rika acts the way she does. It's not yeah. a delusion of grandeur or trying Anything to be cool. Like... It's she, she acts the way she does because she is trying to escape from reality. I'm not going to say exactly what that was, but it's really sad, and it makes me cry. But, just the way the cast helps each other through it, like, at the end, you know? Yuta is best like, boy. Like, Yuta friggin' grabs her from her grandparents' place, puts them on a bike, and lets them, basically gives them the any feelings you have about your past Showed him now by this river, 
also use some puny stuff but <laughs> I said insert insert a uh, catchphrase of the show which is escaping me <laughs> all I know is synap reality synapsis break banishment this world the world nope. the world <laughs> And then they run from the cops. Yeah, and then they run. <laughs> they run from the cops down the river, and the narrator's like, "Everyone does stupid shit." What is the cutest thing you can remember the, about this show? Uh, my favorite cutest <clears throat> moment had to have been when uh, we first see Rika, and she's just like climbing down. <laughs> the balcony and like Yuta puts out her hands when these tiny little feet come out <laughs> and she's like shh because she's sneaking out and then again there's also the time when they were sort of holding each other that was really cute Aww, I also think... the scene with the two of them sitting on the bike together <laughs> I think my favorite cute moment was when uh, Dekomori uh, uh, spun in a circle or a tornado attack and then <clears throat> wrapped herself up in her hair. God, that was funny. She fell over and then the next conversation they had, she was just stuck there in her hair. And no one did anything. <laughs> it's like, Mjolnir Tornado! Nothing get, No one helps her. <laughs> but, like... Twir I like how you called her the twirly idiot. Oh, yeah! In my notes, uh, twirly idiot is so adorbs. But so, what were we saying? Just talking about how cute, uh... Deku is. Yeah. Even though she's... Oh, I'm convinced she's a lesbian. Deku. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's got a major no. lady boner for Rika. No, no, no. Let me explain. Let me give you my evidence. Okay. Her massive lady boner for Mori Summer. Oh. And Butani. Her massive lady boner for Rika. <laughs> as well as how disappointed she was when <clears throat> Rika got a boyfriend. Could have just been jealousy. True. I may be reading too much into it. But we're, we're anime fans. It's definitely lesbians. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I, I, I ship uh, Nibutani and Deku. Oh. <laughs> it, it's, that'd be so funny. You know? Yeah. It'd be like Rika and... Rika, it'd be like Rika and the other dude. Ufta. So, Ufta. who's your favorite Chunbio in another show? Uh, I'm gonna have to say it'll be a, a weird one. Alright. And, uh, maybe a weird consideration to count, but I'm gonna say gosh, who is that guy? Hear me out. This may be out of left field, but Haruhi. Haruhi from the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. Oh. Is my favorite Chuni in anime. She's so Chuni, it affects the plot. <laughs> <laughs> in every way, shape, or form. Well, I've never seen that show, so I'll have to take your word for it. <laughs> She's such a dweeb. I love her. <laughs> My favorite Chunbyo from another show is Megumin from Konosuba. EXPLOSION! I haven't seen, uh, of uh, what, what she's from and trying, its name is escaping me right now. Konosuba? Yeah, Konosuba. You haven't seen that? I have not seen Konosuba, <clears throat> dude. Oh boy. Okay. How so, about... Hmm. Our Chuni stories? Is it time to embarrass ourselves? How about if I watch Haruhi 
you watch Konosuba. Well, you don't like Haruhi. So I need to find something that you hate. We'd have to find something I actively dislike, which is difficult, right? Yeah. Well, we'll find something. I think I know a few shows. Okay. We'll, We'll discuss this later, dude. Before we move into our own stories, let's rate this show. What did you think about it as a whole? The music, pleasant. The girls, cute. Yuta, adorable. (laughs) Cringe, exceptional. (laughs) I rate this, um, 9 out of 10 Mjolnirs. Hmm. Should I rate this using pentagrams? Well... I give it 10 out of 10 Sleepy Coomans. Because oh, she's adorable Coomans. and I love the show. Cooman is conclusively the most adorable character. Pretty much any show that can make me cry gets a 10 for me. Oh boy, do I have shows for you to make 10 out of 10s? Oh boy. I've been e- easing you into my love of feelsy anime. Oh, I love feelsy anime. I just sure. don't watch a lot of it because it makes me cry. It's okay to cry, dude. I know it is, but I cry way too much. I I tear up every time I watch Shutu a little. (laughs) Absolutely. The confession scene. Them at the beach. (laughs) The jumping out the window. Yeah. The grandpa gets a gun. Grandpa, get the gun, it's a- get the gun, it's a cringy teenager. <laughs> so, what, uh, can you tell me some of your Chunbyo moments as a child? Uh, yours, mine, let's see who wants to go first. Because we're all Chuny here, you know? Oh yeah. It's a matter of who wants to be more tuny. What did you do as a kid that was so cringy you wanted to die? Can I say my existence? I'm sorry. Oh, ouch. No. Can I say the first two years of high school were exceptional cringe? Yeah? Yes. But that's because... Wait, no, first year I barely did shit. Second year... I barely know sh- new sh- people. Hmm. And then anime club happened. Oh man, wish I had one of those. A- anime club shenanigans. Want me to talk you about the chuny shit that happened in my anime club? Oh, go for it. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> this is a weird. Okay, okay. So, you know about Welcome to the NHK, yeah? Oh yeah. We watched it on Dub Buds. Yeah, you know how it was a really amazing show? Yeah. Okay. So, rewind the clock. We always put up a poll to vote. Note, this story is the reason why Anime Club had rules afterwards. Oh, boy. (laughs) About anime. If anyone remembers what happens in the first two episodes of Welcome to the NHK, you'll know why. It's the advisor, slitting. The advisor put a kibosh on it as soon as they kept kept repeating hentai games. <laughs> <laughs> and the naked chicks in Yamazaki's wall. <laughs> and the nun scene. It was all... We lasted two episodes... The advisor called it off early, and everyone was pissed at my twin who recommended it. (laughs) Even though it's genuinely a good show, you know? Yeah, that was fun to watch. (laughs) But that caused uh, the rule to be placed at nothing beyond, uh, it was like nothing beyond TV 14 for anime afterwards like we had to check its age rating mm. okay. like it was nothing beyond like pg 14 pg 13 or slightly above 
okay. because of my brother. But did you do anything like, uh, Andy? like pretend you had special powers or something like that when you were a kid? No, but let me confess something right here, right now. Okay. I know the entirety of the dance for the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. Hmm. The whole thing. By memory. Don't know what that is, but... Okay, okay, so... Way back in the day at cons... Yeah? People just do the ending themes dance. Hmm. Randomly, like flash mob style. Ooh, I like flash mobs. And that shit... It's just so dumb. <laughs> oh, there was also the time... In the same club... When, uh... Shoot, I'm trying to think of what happened. Oh yeah, a bunch of new people showed up. And no, at this time I was like a junior. And this horde of new people show up. And the people who have been there for a while were already staking their claim of at what anime to watch. Yeah. And someone's like, let's watch Sword Art Online. Oh no. And, so and someone's like, no, we watched that when it came out. And it was... Alright. Also, the vehement defendings of Sword Art Online. Those were fun times. Oh yeah, when Sword SAO was new. It was also around the time I discovered anime. I watched a lot of it. So you can imagine the cringy <coughs> shit I watched. I absorbed basically any anime in my path. I've got some cringy stuff to talk about. Okay, sorry I was slightly disappointing. Oh, but no there was worries. Also that there was also that time I attempted a creepypasta ritual, but that <laughs> literally w that only went about as far as logistics before I said fuck it. <laughs> <clears throat> I do still have a love with the paranormal. Oh yeah. Love it. Ghosts. Ghosts, monsters, cryptids. My freaking jam and butter. And you know this. Oh yeah. Shit's interesting. Hell yeah. That alien thread on Slash X. Oh god. So. I'll shut up now. My Chuni. Uh, my Chunibyo years came early, as I wasn't even in middle school before I started. Doing weeb. weird weeb shit. Oh my god. When I was in elementary school, I had the kids on my bus convinced that. I was Hiei. Or, or like Hiei. Yes. I, I told you I'd come back to, to Hiei. Hiei. But I, <laughs> I told them that when I got mad, my skin would turn green and sprout eyeballs all over my body. And I told them the only way they could calm me down was to call me Swedish. And, oh my god. Oh my god, that's cringy. I'm, I'm rolling for you, dude. <laughs> oh shoot, I got another one. Also from the fresh... From the Hot Fire Anime Club. Hmm. Okay. So, this isn't... Okay, so it's not necessarily about me, but it's about one of the things that happened there. Yeah. So, you know the type of crowd this shit attracts, yeah? Yeah. We had our usual cast, neckbeards, uh, the lot. <laughs> it was actually a shockingly tame club, all things considered. The most weebery that got down was uh, the Day of Cons. Yeah. You know, which are typically on weekends. Sometimes students would cosplay at school because they didn't want to go home and get ready for the con. Okay. It's something, dude. <laughs> yeah. I used to uh, <laughs> watch a lot of Dragon Ball growing up. Dragon Did Ball, Dragon Ball Z. Saiyan? Did you try going Super Saiyan on me? <laughs> I've... N okay, maybe. That's what I thought. I, di I didn't do the, the cringy yelling, screaming, but... 
<laughs> Definitely meditated a lot. Oh, if I yes. think about it hard enough, my hair will turn gold. But and it already kind of was. <clears throat> It'll get spiky and gold. I used to sit on my hands to uh, to make him fall asleep so I could feel the pins and needles and think oh, about, geez. like, f f really focus on my hand to maybe make an energy ball or a spirit gun. <laughs> I can feel the power flowing into my hand. No, fat man, that's just the blood returning to it. <laughs> You ever do Naruto hand signs? Hand oh, hand absolutely! <laughs> oh, my friends and I just... My friends and I practiced those religiously in middle school. What about alchemy from Full Metal Alchemist? I was out of the... Ch uh, I, I was in high school when, when I got into that, so... Yes, but not as much. <laughs> okay, so I was on the Kamehameha's... The Naruto things. Everyone's tried to come my hammer, huh? Oh my god, I have the story for you about cringy weeb shit. Oh, go on. Okay, so, you you know the stereotypical definition of cringy weeb shit? <laughs> Look at yeah? my katana collection. Okay, okay, so, I was at a convent. There was this guy I knew who is just, like, into memes and shit. Yeah. And he's like, Give me the cringiest otaku trash you can. <laughs> he gave me the convention, and I set myself a budget of like thirty dollars, mm -hmm. maybe twenty bucks. We didn't pay for much. We only paid for an insl inflatable swan that goes right over your junk, <laughs> <laughs> a pair of inflatable fake breasts. Oh boy. A Naruto headband. Oh, absolutely. With, with explicit instructions taped to it to run at your arms in like a 45 degree angle and bending down. Yeah, the, the ninja run. <laughs> the Naruto run. And now for the kicker. You, you know those mouse pads with boobs and stuff on them? Yes, I have many friends that own those. Okay, so, he got not one boob mouse pad, not two, but three. That triple boobage. Nice. <laughs> no, some were bots. Oh. Depend- Slightly less nice. I know. But, uh, so, other things that were- Oh, we also, uh, to pad out the box was the entirety of Love Hina. <laughs> Mm. The manga. The legendarily old harem anime, ecchi harem anime, mm. known for being trashy, just plonked right in there as filler, right next to the Naruto headband. I have a Hidden Sand Village headband on my shelf. <sighs> a metal one. Nice. I've, I've got a Hidden Leaf one somewhere, but I can't find that one. <laughs> so the weeb is strong with you? Oh, absolutely. You know, in my room, there's only one thing that you could tell, and that's my uh, one clan ad poster, and the fact that I have a dongo pillow. I've got manga on my shelves, anime, figures, oh, headbands, wall scrolls. What's that? I also have a crap I also have a crap load of manga hidden in my room, strategically. Uh. My twin ha- Have you ever heard of a- ser Never mind. That- that's a bit extra. Oh! Also, just thought of something cringy. One time, with my twin- Yeah? You're familiar with visual novels, yeah? Yeah. Are you familiar with, um, Katoa Shoujo? I am. I was told never to play it because it'll make me sad. Hey, I liked it. It's actually a really touching game, and I like the message in it. I have a friend that won't shut up about it. Okay. Okay, so, my twin and I, for shits and giggles, decided to uh, speedrun the game. Yeah. Wanna know what our goal was? What's that? The, we, won, we won when we hit our first sex scene. <laughs> 
Because <laughs> we're both speed readers. It's like, we go, we go, we go. Boom! Oh, and then I kept losing because I never got on any routes with the girls. Ah. Uh. <laughs> kept getting the bad end where I die on a rooftop. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. Let's probably wrap this up. We've been going yeah. for over an hour. I think some of that was blank space, though. Yeah, I'm gonna have a lot of editing to do. I'm sorry, dude. <clears throat> no worries. But let us end this. Well, that was real fun to talk about. Let's talk about our cringe some other time. Yeah. <laughs> I could keep going for so long about the shit I did. So, but, so could I. But we've run out of time today. Indeed. Thanks for- Oh, shoot. What's that? <clears throat> Shouldn't we tell them what we're watching next? Or yeah, not, not I was about to get to that. that. Okay, sorry. If you're still here, thanks for sticking with us to the end. Yeah. It, this has been fun talking about. And I'd love to hear your own cringy stories in the comments below. All the stupid shit you've done as a child. Oh yeah. All the Chunvio moments. But... Everything you've done magic, every summon a demon, every summon Bloody Mary, <laughs> every look for aliens, all that jazz. Well, we've shared our thoughts, but we'd like to hear yours as well in the comments. Oh, shit, I already said that. Yeah. Yeah. Night parades come to an end. Next week, yeah. we're going to do Oban Star Racers. I have no idea what that is. I'm excited. It is a French anime that premiered on Dear Jetix. Dear God, what am I getting into? Pod Racers done right. Got it. That's uh, See you guys next time. Later. I am the Dark Flame Master. Perish enveloped in flames of darkness. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> So cringy. <laughs> and that's the stinger. Yep. <laughs>